glory to Jesus Christ. Hello, I'm Father Thomas Loya. When our hearts are filled with the love of God and we see everything through that love, even tragedy and sorrow can be turned to gift and only through God's love. Please help us to spread that message of love. Support Shalom World TV. No gift is too small, no gift is too large. Welcome to all the viewers of Shalom World Television. My name is Jensen Joseph. I live in Kalamazoo, Michigan. I have a beautiful wife and three young children. In the next two talks, I want to focus my discussion on our attitude towards prayer. And I want to begin this discussion by calling your attention to Luke chapter 22, verse 31. Jesus tells Peter in this manner, he tells him, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has demanded to sift all of you like wheat, but I have prayed that your own faith may not fail. And once you have turned back, you must strengthen your brothers. What was Jesus Christ saying here? Jesus Christ realized the seriousness of the situation. He says that Satan had demanded to crush the apostles, to destroy their souls, to crush them like wheat. And because Jesus realized how critical, how serious a danger the apostles were in, he said that, I have prayed for you, Simon, that you may not fail and that once you have recovered, you will strengthen your brothers, the other apostles. Now, Jesus told the disciples that he prayed for them. But the question remains, what was the attitude of Jesus toward prayer? And we see that very clearly stated in Hebrews chapter 5, verse 7. It says like this, In the days when he was in the flesh, when Jesus was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death and he was heard because of his reverence. Jesus was very much convicted of how dangerous the situation was. Satan had demanded to crush his apostles and he realized that prayer was the only option that was the only solution. And because St. Paul says in Ephesians chapter 6 that our struggle is not with flesh and blood, but with the principalities, with the powers, with the world rulers of this present darkness, with the evil spirits in the heavens. So Jesus realized that prayer was the only solution. And how did Jesus invest himself in prayer? Hebrew says that with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him. And he was heard because of his reverence. So the most important element in prayer is reverence. What is reverence? Loud tears and cries to the one who was able to save. In other words, when Jesus was in the flesh, he prayed with the attitude that God the Father is the only solution for this problem. He is the only one who can do something in this dangerous situation. For Jesus, when he prayed with loud cries and tears, there was only one option. Option A, God the Father, he has to do something. That is the only solution, that is, that is the only option. When Jesus prayed, there is no option B, there is no option C. And Jesus realized that in this dangerous situation, if God the Father doesn't do something, 
then nobody can do anything else. That situation will become worse and his apostles will be crushed, will be destroyed. So realizing that the only option, the only person who can help is God the Father. He cried out. The scripture says, while he was in the flesh, he cried out with loud tears and cry, uh, with tears and cries to the one who was able to save, who was able to save. And he was heard because of his reverence. This was the reverence that was so evident in the prayers that Jesus offered. In other words, Jesus was admired God was in awe of God the Father because of the power he had. He believed that God could do the miracles, that God is the only one who can do the impossible. He was convicted of the might of God, that God was all powerful, all powerful. He was convicted of that. And because of that conviction, he was, that translated into the right attitude in his prayer, which was he showed reverence. And the question to you and me is this, do we pray with the same attitude? When we pray to God, how many options are there on our list? Do we have option A and option B and option C? In other words, if God does not act in this situation in our life, do we have this attitude that if that doesn't, if God doesn't do anything, then I will go on to option B or I will go on to option C? Do we have a plan of action if God doesn't act? Is that our attitude that we bring to when we pray? Are we in awe and wonder of the might of God? Do we believe that God is all powerful? He can do the impossible. Do we believe that? Are we convicted of that? You know, and, and the thing is that, uh, do we believe that there is that that God will act, you know, and that God must act because if God doesn't act, no no other solution for this problem. Do we believe that? Do we cry out to God with loud cries and tears? Do we pray with tears? Does our heart ache when we pray? Are we desperate for God? Do we understand how unhealthy? the moral life of the society that we live in today is? Do we grieve over the fact that many families are being crushed? Many families are falling apart. Many people are walking away from the faith. Are we grieved over the situation in our world today? Are we crying about the brokenness in the lives of people and the lives of families? In James chapter four, verse three, uh, it is said like this, James the apostle says, you ask, you pray but you do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your own passions. Our prayer lacks reverence because we are not praying that God's will be done. We are praying that our will be done. And James calls attention to that. We pray, we ask, but we do not get an answer because we are asking wrongly. We are asking God so that we can spend it on our own passions. We are not praying the will of God be done. We are praying our will be done. Our prayer also lacks concern for others because many times we are praying without shedding tears. There is no concern for others. And so the prayer is just words. There are no tears that accompany the prayer. Haggai, the book of Haggai chapter one, verse four, it says like this, is it time for you to dwell in your own paneled homes? houses while this house, the house of God lies in rooms. In other words, is it time for you to live comfortably, to be caught up in the luxuries and the comforts of life when the church of God is suffering, when people's faith are lost, when people are walking away from the church and from God? Haggai is talking about the body of Christ. The body of Christ is suffering today. We are living in unprecedented times. Satan is, is destroying and extinguishing the faith and morality in every society. He is very active in his work of destruction. And our attitude towards this deep degradation of the faith, the degradation of morality in society, our attitude towards this is indifference. And that is what Haggai is calling attention to. Haggai chapter one verse nine says like this, because my house lies in rooms, while each of you hurries to his house, 
We know that in the time of St. Francis of Assisi, the church was going through a very difficult time. And the message that God gave, say, Francis of Assisi was build my church. In other words, rather than focusing on your life and the luxuries and the comforts of life, you embrace the burden that's in my heart for the people, for my people, for the church. You cry and pray, you make sacrifice, you dedicate your life for the conversion of souls. Build my church. In today's society, when the times are so unprecedented, it is the same message to us. Build my church. And if we study the history of the Catholic Church, we will realize that no impact is made on the world by people who pray without shedding tears. No impact is made on the world by people who pray without shedding tears. It, people who have no concern for the welfare of humanity, when they pray, they make no impact on the world. This is the truth. Because the history of the church shows that such prayers does not work, it will not work, it has never worked. So we need to have the most important element in our prayers, reverence. We need to understand the seriousness of the times that we live in. And we need to realize that God is the only one, only one who can do something. There is no option B, there is no option C, there is only one option, and that is God the Father. God has to act. And so like Jesus, we have to cry out to God and say, Lord, please help. We believe you can do it. You are the impossible God. You are the impossible power. You, you have the power to do anything. You can do the impossible. We have to believe that. We have to proclaim it. We have to confess it. You know. And when we cry in such a manner, and when we pray that God's will be done, not our will, but God's will be done, when we have the concern for others in our prayer, when we shed tears and pray, when we ache in our heart because of the situations in the world, and we pray in that manner, then the scripture says that we will be heard by God. We will be heard by heaven. Heaven will answer our prayer. Because why? Because of our reverence. So reverence is very important. So let us ask God, first of all, for forgiveness, for the lack of reverence that we showed in our prayer life. Let us beg his forgiveness. Let us confess all the times we prayed without the proper reverence. And let us ask God to give us the gift of tears. We need to be concerned about the welfare of humanity. We need to have that deep concern in our heart. We need to pray with tears. And let us ask the God for the grace to do that because by our own strength, we cannot do that. But by God's strength, it is possible. So let us ask his grace. And Lord Jesus, Right now, I pray for all the viewers of Shalom World TV that you may instill in them, give them the gift of prayer, prayer with proper reverence. Give them the gift of tears. Give them the grace to be concerned about others. Give them the grace to pray that God's will be done from their hearts. And give them the grace, Lord, to pray with reverence, to really believe that you you are the only one who can help us in this situation. In every situation, no other person can help us. No other person can do something for us, only you. And help us to pray with that conviction. Help us to be in awe of the might, the power of God. The capacity of God can do anything, anything. Help us to be in awe of that. Help us to believe that, to be convicted of that. To be in wonder of that. And help us to to, to pray with reverence. Mother Mary, you are the one who showed the most reverence in your prayers along with Jesus. So teach us to pray with reverence to your blessed mother. Thank you, Jesus. And we praise you, Jesus. And we thank you, blessed mother, for your intercession in the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If you have good news, we expect you to want to share it. Salvation in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who for love of us and for our salvation came down from heaven. Salvation in His name, and He is the only Savior, is what we are on earth for. Therefore, all those who spread the good news of salvation in Jesus Christ, we should encourage them. I can speak, but how many people can I reach alone? But the media, 
the television people, the radio, the newspapers, and all those who use the computer and its derivatives in various ways to spread the gospel. We must thank them. We must encourage them. We must work with them so that they can continue to spread the good news. There's so much news that it's not so wonderful in the world, but there is also news that is wonderful on the gospel of Jesus Christ. We encourage them and beg God to bless them, especially the Shalom World TV. God bless you. Shalom World, God's own channel.